Welcome to the Muxall Open IoT channel. I am your host, Michael Crane. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pop this controller out of there and and see if I can uh, get the Muxall controller somehow to fit in there. Uh, I, I'm going to try not to pull this thing off. You know, one thing, I don't want to empty all the pellets out of it. And I don't know. It, it, it's got the wire there. I, it looks like I might have to crawl on my back and unwire it or something like that. And, I don't know. We'll see. We'll pull the controller off and have a look at it and see how hard it's going to be. It might be easier just to pull this thing off right here. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm shooting for the, the quick and easy because I want I'm very curious to see if the Muxall controller is going to do uh, better. And uh, I'm sure it will, but <laughs> that was pretty bad yesterday. Anyway, uh, I, I, I can't operate the screwdriver and hold the phone up. And plus, uh, it's not very interesting to watch anyway, so um, I'll go ahead and take the screws out of this thing and I'll be back. Okay, well, I, that didn't take too long, a couple minutes. And uh, I'm not going to look at this controller too much. But I did notice, I was like, okay, everything's soldered in. And, and I see everything is tie strapped. I don't know if you can see it back there. So, yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to climb on my back, take some screws. I guess I'll have to take these out. Oops. Oh, you can't see that, can you? I'll have to take these screws out here. That's probably holding this bottom plate on so I can access the uh, that tie strap in there and cut it off and unplug it. Uh, but it looks like it's got the normal Molex connector, so uh, hopefully it'll be a plug and play. Otherwise, I'll have to put a bunch of connectors on there. That'll kind of suck. Anyway, I'll be back in a minute. As I guessed, I pulled, I pulled those four screws out. I know you can't really see it. There's two on the back, or two on the front. There's two on the back down here. That plate just popped right out. It did have some ash off in there. That's uh, that's that's probably not too good. But uh, yeah, let me climb up underneath here and I'll take a gander at this thing. Oh, oh. Okay, so uh, yeah, there's that tie strap, uh, fan motor, auger, and uh, what kind of connectors are these? Oh yeah, they look like Molex connectors. Sorry, I'm trying to look through the phone, but this thing zooms in so much, it's, it's freaking my glasses out. All right, let me cut this. I'll take the... Uh, Controller off. I mean, it looks like just a standard fan. I mean, this looks like a Trigger fan. You know, regular auger motor. Let's see. Is that, I don't know if you guys can see, but is that, uh, so if I take this thing off, yeah, it looks like I'll have to disconnect the. Wah! <laughs> Okay, you guys see that in there? Yeah, that's that's the auger motor, just flapping in the breeze there. Okay, we might have to pull this apart, but I was hoping that I wouldn't have to take the take all the pellets out of it. I'm I'm just a lazy cuss sometimes. Anyway, I'll be back. Okay, well, I went ahead and unscrewed that, untied the tie straps, or cut the tie straps. Sorry. Unplugged it. Yeah, it's just uh, they're just Molex connectors here. Very good. And uh, yeah, this thing right here, we're just going to uh, yeah, we don't care about that anymore. So uh, yeah, I went ahead and and emptied the hopper because <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and pull this thing off so we can look at it. I'll have to uh, I'll have to take the ground screw off. Can you see it from up here? I really don't want to climb underneath there, but. Um, yeah, so right here, I don't know if you guys can see, there's a, there's a screw. There's a screw right there. It's, a, it's one of these screws mounting the fan that the ground wire is hooked up. And I'll have to take that off because uh, they have this power cord mounted in the box with this um, 
uh, strain relief. I don't know if it's called strain relief. Anyway, it keeps it from, keeps you from pulling the, the cable in and out. I, and I like that. It's, it's not bad. It's just I you know, have to take the uh, the ground wire off and I have to figure out how to take that thing out of there to um, fire it up. But but anyway, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and take that ground wire off and uh, I think I'll go ahead and just. For the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and take the three screws off on this side, the three screws off on that side, and it looks like there's a couple down there. Uh, man, that's some nice metal work. <laughs> I'll take those off, and uh, yeah, I think this thing will pop right off. So I'm going to do that. I'll be back in a minute. Hello, alrighty. Well, it just popped right off. No problems at all. Um, yeah, there it is right there. show you it real quick <clears throat> yeah just had six screws three on each side and then two right there and uh yeah, let's take a look at this yeah there's those pellets that i was talking about wow that's uh <laughs> i don't know what happened there that's uh that's probably not too good yeah so that's uh that's quite the mount job right there. And you know what's funny is, is I'm not overly surprised about this. I have seen this before. And it didn't wobble around nearly this much. And where I've seen it is in my, um, one of my, my grills around here. <laughs> um, I don't remember if it's in the bull grill, I'm sorry, the steer grill, or in the one I test with, but yeah. But yeah, they, I mean, it's, they, they have it, it's much stabler than this. This is, this is pretty sad right there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, um, and what it's for is, is to give the motor a little bit of, you know, if the auger's like stuck and it's trying to turn on, it gives the motor a little bit of room to get started and so it can have some torque because if it tries starting from a dead stop and it's, and it's you know, in a hard mounted, the, the motor can't get the inertia to push a pellet, push a pellet series. Let's say like, you know, what, you got some hard pellets or something like that. Anyway, it kind of lets the motor, uh, gives it some, some room to get started uh, for some tough pellets. But yeah, I've never seen one flop around that bad. <laughs> That's pretty sad. Anyway, uh, it's okay, I guess. I'll have to figure out how to tighten it up a little bit. Uh, anyway, there's a fan motor. These uh, these screws, by the way, are a quarter inch. Uh, go figure. My uh, American truck has metric stuff in it, and my Chinese girl has American stuff in it. So there you go. And, uh, okay. Um, oh. Uh, yeah, there wasn't a gasket here. And I don't know what they were doing right here. I, you know, I'll bet you a dollar a donut hole this thing got rained on and they probably had to chisel out all, the, all these pellets. I, I can't figure out why it's like this right here. And the, uh, the hopper is kind of hacked up as well. So yeah, I don't, maybe to give it more room, better feed. I, I don't know. It's uh, it's pretty strange. So uh, anyway, nothing, nothing really on this side. The fan just kind of blows. What is it? Is that the? I guess that's the igniter wire. You guys see that back there? Yeah, yeah. That's the igniter wire. Right here. Anyway, well, the color code seems to be, all right, red auger. Oh, green fan, it, the, my triggers weren't. I'm going to uh, see about what it's gonna take to put the, uh, the Muxall controller on here. Now that I have it, I can put it up on the bench and, and I'll probably have to cut some right here. I don't think that's tall enough for my controller. Now I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Yeah, that hole is way too small. So I, I went ahead and just laid a faceplate on there. And uh, 
what I'm trying to do, if you're wondering why it's offset like that, I was trying to get it as far away from the, the heat heat source as possible. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess it's nice having the controller on the front side. You know, this is the side, right? But I personally, I would have stuck it on the side over here just to keep it away from the heat. But that's my preference, as far away from possible, you know, all the electronics and everything. Anyway, um, yeah, so I went ahead and just marked a couple of screw holes. I'm hoping, oh, and you're wondering about this faceplate. It got damaged. I don't know if you can see it right there. There's a big scratch. It got damaged when it was being made. And the reject pile. You can see I kind of marked it. Now that's on the outside. I'll have to come in about a quarter. And I'll have to come in just a little above the, the screw hole there and about a quarter inch in or so and cut it out. So electronics will fit in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to, I can't do it and hold the, the phone. There you go. Now you can see what's going on. I'll cut it out, drill the holes. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I cut it out. It took pretty much the whole the whole brand new blade on my uh, fiberglass uh, blade on my Dremel. And I did I did file down the corners, you know, for safety. Yeah, that could actually be done a little bit more. And uh, yeah, and I blew it out a little bit with my air compressor. So let's test fit this. Okay, I'll try to do this. I'm taking a video. And see, I can't see that hole. Can you guys see that? Ah, oh, there we go. There's one. There's two. Pull that back out. And I'll mount it back on top of this thing and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so uh, I went ahead and filed this a little bit. While I was at it, I cleaned those old pellets out. Uh, I'm not sure why they were stuck in there. Um, and I did tighten the connectors up. I, I put this in the user's manual. I tell people about this constantly. You've got to make sure these, these little um, pins inside the Molex connectors are tight or you're going to have all kinds of bad things happening while your grill is running. Anyway, and I also kind of cleaned up. I, I went ahead and filed all those things. So that thing, it probably should have a gasket up underneath there. But it's got, eh, I don't know if gasket's going to help that. And uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, this must be some kind of prototype grill, I'm guessing. Because, uh, yeah, it looks a little bit hacked up. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and pop this guy on there. I tighten the connectors up. I everything should be good to go so uh i will be back in a few minutes with uh pretty much assembled except for the controller i guess okay i got it all tightened up everything's tightened up and snug i'm gonna go ahead and uh i'm not gonna put that bottom plate on i'm just gonna leave the wires kind of dangling out here so um yeah i'm gonna go ahead and and stick the controller on there well, I've rolled it outside. I have put pellets in it. The controller is mounted and it's all wired up. And I know this isn't a uh, installation <laughs> video. I was going to show doing the wiring and stuff, but this video is going to be long enough. And I'm mainly interested to see how it's going to work. And I'm sure you are too. So the controller is plugged in. It is firing up. Okie dokie. It is reading the uh, chamber probe. Good. 86. Chamber probe's right there. By the way, I, I do like the, the way they they covered the wire with uh, metal channeling. That's, that's very nice. So yeah, let's go ahead and fire this baby up. Good. <laughs> I know, no one's surprised, but um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and set the temperature to 225, my favorite testing temperature. And uh, oh, let me close this door. 
So, um, gosh, I, oh, 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 I guess, so that jumping, I guess, is the auger in there. Let me see it bouncing around. Yeah, probably not. Anyway, <laughs> I hear it's, it's already, uh, well, I guess I didn't run it out of pellets, never mind. But, um, yeah, I heard that auger kind of take a bounce in there. And well, I'll figure out some way to tighten that guy up. And, uh, by the way, I didn't put in that bottom piece. All the wires are dangling out, don't care. Uh, and just kind of as a side note, while we're waiting for this thing to fire up, the antenna wire needs to be kept kept as far away from possible, far away as possible from the uh, motors because this cheap little wire on these these are only ten dollar antennas. I I'm I'm looking at getting better ones, but the better ones are like sixty bucks. <laughs> I don't know if anyone wants to buy pay sixty dollars for a Wi-Fi antenna. So um, anyway. <laughs> Uh, that's just kind of a note that these wires are just like they just pick up every bit of noise in the world yeah I was just sitting there thinking that I smell I smell something I can hear the pellets tinkling on you can kind of see them through the grate there it's pretty cool actually Oh, yeah, I see smoke. Got a little bit of smoke coming out. I actually haven't touched it from our test run yesterday. I don't know if there's a bunch of ash in there in that burn pot or not. But yeah, I, it's starting. I see it's starting to smoke now, so good. I don't have the, um, the flame on detection enabled, so. It won't, uh, it's not going to shut off if I leave the doors open. I am very curious to see if it's going to overshoot because this thing is set up very similar to a Memphis. And and this, this controller is in default mode. Default mode in a Memphis would overshoot big time. So, uh, yeah, I'm very curious to see what's going to happen. Anyway, uh... I'm gonna start. I'm gonna let it let ignite fire get kicked off. It looks like it's just now starting to get fired up. Anyway, I'll be back. Oh, we overshot by a little bit, <laughs> and it's still going up. So okay, yeah, yeah I'm gonna need some tweaking. I, I don't have it. It's probably connected to the Wi-Fi. I could probably go in there and tweak it, but. Um, and maybe I'll have to if it if it keeps climbing like this. <laughs> yeah. Right now, I, right now it's just set default. Everything is default in the thing. So, and uh, like I said, and I said it's set up like a Memphis. I, it, it could, there's a number of girls that are probably have this kind of a burn pot in them, and but uh, I just say that because it kind of looks like it. It might be very similar to the cook shack I, I really don't know some of the other ones might have the same kind of thing but the big thing is is uh yeah we got a bit of overshoot i don't know how many pellets was you know was left from yesterday there might have been quite a few in there i, I really don't know but uh anyway <laughs> uh yeah hey actually hey it's not doing as bad as the other one <laughs> i don't know if that's any consolation but man, I'll tell you, my my trigger, it would take it 30, 40 minutes to get up to 377 degrees. If it would get up, well, no, it'll hit 400, but yeah, this one's going to smoke past it, it looks like. Anyway, I'll be back. Anyway, I changed the, uh, the, the cook mode to precision. It was on max, and, and I was going to change that slew rate something lower but I don't know I like I said I don't know how many pellets was in there before if uh, if, if I knew that the, the burn pot was clean and there wasn't any extra pellets in there then then yeah I might mess around with it a little bit more but 
yeah, I, I don't think I'm gonna mess with that right now. We'll just see what happens. It's dropping down. And and I and I, I'm I have purposely not opened the doors. I wanted to see if it was gonna recover. And by the way, the best part of testing barbecue controllers or barbecues in general is uh the waiting time. <laughs> Got lots of time to kill while the barbecue is doing something. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. It's uh it's about seven o'clock here. I'm I'd call that Miller time. Okay, so I've been sitting here uh, maybe 20 minutes. I went ahead and changed it, it wasn't getting any lower than 300 and I went ahead and changed the fuel on men and to three turn the cool down time to 15 minutes since that's what the other controller had and maybe this girl needs it because it seems to run very hot very easily so uh, hopefully it'll uh, it'll start cooling off eventually it should I might have to turn it on Memphis mode if if it keeps running this hot I mean it's it's not as bad as the Memphis. The Memphis is an insulated cooker that just, <laughs> I mean, it, it'll, it'll hit 500 with about a dozen pellets. So um, I don't think this one's gonna be that bad, but uh, yeah, I probably have to tweak it a little bit to uh, get it to run properly. Anyway, I'll be back. Well, I've been sitting here for about another 20 minutes and um, yeah it just had a bounce the lowest it got was about 230 and that's that with a fuel on minimum of two and I, I changed the slew rate to uh, slow two so yeah yeah, a low temp cooking in this thing is going to be a bit of a problem. It's 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 probably going to act more like I don't want to say the Memphis, but more like uh, maybe the Aussie grills or something like that. This uh, this auger feeds it must it feeds a bunch of fuel. So um, <laughs> yeah, actually I haven't checked the pellets. Yeah, not much. I mean. This is not an insulated grill. At least I don't think it is. No, it doesn't look like it. Yeah. yeah, it just it just holds a lot of heat. And it just won't cool off. So, uh... Well, that cooled it off. Maybe I should just leave the door... Oh, that's what I could do. I could use Joe's uh, uh, tinfoil ball method and just leave the door open. Or least one of them and uh see if it will cool it off a bit but anyway i'll sit here for a few more minutes tinkering with it see if i can get it to run properly and um i'll check in a minute yeah i just had another bounce me opening the lid messing around showing you guys so uh yeah i'll have to look at this a little bit more i need to get my computer out here and graph it and this thing is supposed to be a smoker as well as a as a grill, so you know it needs to be able to cook at 180, right? <laughs> anyway, I'll uh, I'll be back. Don't forget, you can support the Muxall Open IoT channel by donation using a credit card and PayPal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up, that helps, and hit the subscribe button, that really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.